What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overlord here. So this will be a video specifically talking about Jeepers Creepers 5 this time around. More so a theory more than anything. Not anything official as far as news is concerned. Just a theory. And the reason I'm doing this is because of the fact that I was thinking about, the, about how Jeepers Creepers has brought up Wheaton Valley several different times now. But... The first time we actually got any real glimpse of Wheaton Valley was the letdown that was Jeepers Creepers 3. And we know something very significant took place in Wheaton Valley back in 1978. So I was thinking of how can you have Jeepers Creepers 5 possibly open in a way that can be very memorable and rival the openings of those first two movies. So Jeepers Creepers 5, in my head, I could see opening up on a prom night. It's maybe the first 10 minutes of the movie. We open in Wheaton Valley, 1978. We're shown two young teens. They're leaving their prom. They've just been named king and queen. Instead of sticking around for everyone to congratulate them, they decide to get out of there to enjoy the night. And if you already guessed or picked up on the details, yes, this is us getting to see how Kenny and Darla died back on their prom night in 78. The two discuss wanting to get home to their newborn son while they rush to the car. Now, the newborn son bit definitely is a bit of new information from me because there's never a mention of Kenny or Darla having a son in those first couple of movies, especially the first one where they're referenced more so than the second one. But they express interest in wanting to get home to their newborn son. Kenny drives himself, of course, and Darla down the infamous East 9 Highway, and the two are enjoying each other's company until Kenny looks off to his left and through his driver's side window is able to see what appears to be a man assaulting a woman. Kenny, driving past it, slams down on his brakes after realizing what he just saw. Darla asks what's wrong, and Kenny rushingly tells her there's a woman back there being assaulted. He gets his seatbelt off, puts the car in park, and runs over to help but the man darts off into the field with the woman and Kenny goes chasing after this supposed man, but we all know who this is. Darla screams at Kenny to come back, but jumps into the driver's seat and begins to back the car up in reverse closer to where Kenny just ran off to. In the field, we're, re we're refocusing on Kenny. He disappears chasing after the creeper, but stops when the creeper is no longer visible. Kenny continues to search around, but no sign of the woman or the creeper, but when Kenny decides to go ahead and leave, the creeper is in front of him when he turns around and blocks his mouth to prevent the scream that would have been coming. The creeper signals for Kenny to shh. And while Kenny looks at the creeper in terror, the creeper snaps his neck. Darla is screaming for Kenny. And while she's doing that, his body drops out of the sky onto the hood of their car. And she decides to drive off since Kenny, of course, is clearly dead. She doesn't get far. The creeper takes out her tires with the classic throwing stars. She swerves off the highway and into the tree or into a tree, spilling the beer cans that were in the vehicle in the process of this. So when Darla is attempting to get out of the car, she hears a breathing sound from behind or like a sniffing sound. And when she looks behind her to look into the rear, I guess, look into the uh, rear window of the vehicle, she sees the creeper sniffing the outside of the vehicle which causes Darla to yell in terror. Darla is ultimately killed after a game of cat and mouse ensues where she remains uncertain about stepping outside of the vehicle or not. Foolishly she ultimately of course decides to step out but has her head chopped off for her efforts by the creeper's battle axe. Now the creeper ends up abandoning the scene with Darla's body but returns for the head later on while the cops are on the scene managing to get away with the head while the remain while remaining hidden. So only one cop was able to see the head at the time, but no one believes his claims about this head once the creeper takes it. So in this opening, I tried to include as much that acknowledges Jeepers Creepers 1 details. So you have the alcohol, Darla's head being chopped off, the car is the only thing that the police found at the scene, etc. Then after this opening, we jump to 46 years later, 2024. So we're in the same year that Jeepers Creepers 2 left us at. Where Jeepers Creepers 2 concluded, I meant to say. And we meet a handful of newbies, one of which who are going to lead this story will be Kenny and Darla's son, 
46 years old and determined to kill the monster that killed his parents. And this boy who I'll just name Kyle will narrate the story and we overhear him saying every 23rd spring for 23 days it gets to eat. He's riding down the East Nine Highway reminding us of what the creeper is, its history with East Nine, and that two days ago it escaped the barn that old man Taggart thought would be its final resting place. Kyle will basically be on his way in my mind with his girlfriend who also lost someone to the creeper 23 years ago he's on his way to meet up with a character who we all know and love trisha jenner who has a plan on how to stop the creeper once and for all now trisha is not going to be the focus of this now i know that's what all of us would want but in my mind in a perfect world this story would be about kenny and darla's child that's the first part of a trilogy then the second part that can be about trisha if you want to give trisha's time to breathe there and then the last part of the trilogy can be focused on the perspective from Trisha's son. And all of them will come together with the newbies that are here and some refreshing faces like Giselle, maybe bringing Tubbs or some other people like Minx C even. All of these characters will culminate into a finale movie with the concluding chapter of a trilogy in my head. And the creeper will just be put to bed once and for all. Now, the reason... I want to try to figure out a way to end Jeepers Creepers 5 with a non cliffhanger ending is just to avoid something like what has left so many people clamoring since the end of Jeepers Creepers 2. The end of the first Jeepers Creepers, if you interpret it a certain way, maybe you could argue it is a cliffhanger. But to me, the original film is very conclusive It has a definitive end. Obviously, the monster is still out there. But it left no crumbs in terms of the sequels are not necessary. I would like to see something like that occur in Jeepers Creepers 5. And if we get it, and I think that could be done either, of course, obviously by having it end in a very similar way to that original movie. Or maybe there's just something with the Creeper that ultimately makes the people in the town able to get rid of it from that area. But it's not killed completely. But you guys let me know what you think about an opening like that down in the comment section below about Kenny and Darla's child also being the factor or being the centerpiece of a potential Jeepers Creepers 5. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on post notifications and never miss the video. In the description, I'll have links on my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there, of course. Let me know if there are any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. Mostly, I'm just trying to kind of work into a narrative that isn't too reliant on gina phillips or the character of trisha just in case she's not available and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video